are so happy to have you all here tonight. Old faces, faces I see every year, new faces, family of faces. It's good to have each and every one of you here. Let us worship God together. The impossible is about to happen in a stable. The people who walk in darkness will see a great light. For those who live in a land of deep darkness, a light will shine. For you will break the yoke of their slavery and lift the heavy burden from their shoulders. You will break the oppressor's rod. For a child is born to us, a son is given to us. The government will rest upon his shoulders. He will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His government and his peace will never end. Let us sing together, O come, all ye faithful.
us pray. What a holy, sacred night this is. Our hearts are full of anticipation and hope. The beauty of the season brings us face to face with your son, the miracle of the incarnation, God becoming human, the savior choosing to live among us. Oh, what a miraculous wonder. Oh, what a holy night. As we worship the infant king, we celebrate the greatness of this incredible gift you have given. Thank you, Father, for sending your son. We welcome your presence as we worship tonight. And we pray together as Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. You may be seated. Quiet town, quiet night, the heavens all aglow. The wanderers in Bethlehem at last have found repose. A quiet place, a sheltered space, a stable place.
Quietly, quietly, the love of God descends, and quiet hearts can hear the song of peace, goodwill to men. Quietly, so quietly, the world is set aright, and heaven smiles a holy child is born this quiet night. Psalm 96, sing a new song to the Lord, let the whole earth sing to the Lord. Publish his glorious deeds among the nations, tell everyone about the amazing things he does. The gods of other nations are mere idols, but the Lord made the heavens. O nations of the world, recognize the Lord. Recognize that the Lord is glorious and strong. Worship the Lord in all his holy splendor. Let all the earth tremble before him. Let the heavens be glad and the earth rejoice. Let the sea and everything in it shout his praise. He is coming to judge the earth. He will judge the world with justice and the nations with his truth. We will now sing our Advent hymn, He Came Singing. <coughs>
Because people all over the world are suffering and we are too busy to notice, we light candles. Today, we stop everything and light these candles, one for hope, one for peace, one for joy, and one for love. Together, these are words that represent Christ and actions that we live out because we are the body of Christ. Because injustice and despair threaten to overwhelm us, we pray for hope, candle of hope. Because so many swords have not yet been beaten into plowshares, we pray for peace, candle of peace. Because grief and loss weigh so heavily, we pray for joy, candle of joy. Because hatred is so still so strong, and because people all over the world are suffering, we pray for love, candle of love. God has come to us as a child. Christ is present in our world. Candle of Christ. May the light and the fire from these candles burn away everything that is preventing the God of hope and peace and joy and love from being born among us. Friends, be not afraid, even now, even now, the light of Christ is overwhelming the world. We come as your faithful to Bethlehem, O God, and gather in awe around the manger of the Christ child. We look with thanksgiving at this gift of love and unlimited possibilities, and yet, and yet, we pause in our wondering and ponder the manger without the baby. We think of the times in the past year when our lives have felt a bit like the straw before us, dried up, used up, <coughs> empty. Let it be that into this emptiness the Christ child comes. Let the straw of, be of freshly cut hay, providing a place for new beginnings, a new life a whole new year. Let it be that we are the ones to put the baby back, and yet let it be that we are the ones to catch a vision of the new life possible when we share this baby born in Bethlehem. Let it be that we are the ones to let Christ loose in our own lives that others might be found. We pray in the name of the one who came that we might know what a life of love looks like. Jesus, the Christ, the baby in the manger. Amen. 
Let us sing together, What Child Is This? It's very difficult to get through the Advent season without seeing a nativity scene. We no longer see these on the courthouse lawn, but we're likely to see such scenes in shopping malls, in our homes, in homes of our friends, or on the lawns of our neighbors, or the one right here. Such scenes can be found all over the world. Some nativity scenes are huge. Others are small enough to fit on the mantle in the living room, or the one that I bought this tall as a bell, you opened it up, and the figures were about this tall. They come in all sizes. Sometimes nativity scenes go missing. Just last year, a councilwoman in Pittsburgh discovered that a personal nativity scene, a family heirloom, had gone missing after she had placed it under the city council Christmas tree. 
It was a crush that belonged to her grandmother. Some believe it was a political theft having to do with church and state issues. In Spencer, Ohio, someone made off with one of the lambs from the nativity scene at South Park Mall. The culprit has never been apprehended. No doubt, he's on the lamb with the lamb. Also last year, several figures from a nativity scene at a church in Maine were stolen the day after Christmas. Nativity theft is apparently a common thing. Timothy Merrill, editor of Homiletics, tells the following story about a nativity scene. A little more than a year ago, he and his wife spotted a small advertisement about nativity scenes. The website offered nativity figures hand-carved by a Chinese woodcarver. The pieces included stable animals, Mary, Joseph, and baby Jesus. The customer could choose how many pieces he or she wanted, and the price was set accordingly. A 16-piece set cost more than an 8-piece set. Go figure. She wanted them all. So we made the order, and in due time, the package arrived. The order included a stable that could be pieced together. After assembling the stable, they unwrapped and hard <laughs> hand-carved pieces. We placed them in the scene itself, the piece was beautiful. We were quite happy with the craftsmanship and the uniqueness of the display. Then, I'm sorry, I'm changing between the way he told it and the way I'm telling it, but then they noticed something odd. They could not find the baby Jesus. Since the set had come in a large wooden box, a box that was full of styrofoam peanuts, old newspapers used for wrapping and the like, we sifted through everything, pawing around, throwing stuff in the air. Soon the living room looked like the floor of a UPS shipping center, but still no baby. We wrote to the woodcarver about this. The website had said that the baby Jesus was included. Where? was baby Jesus. He replied that he had discontinued baby Jesus because customers invariably lost the little baby wood carving. I asked him if he would carve us a baby and he said yes, but I could not get it to us in time for Christmas. I would have it in about February. I said that was fine. This year, baby Jesus is in the nativity scene of the Merrill home. The question is, do we have baby Jesus in our scene, as it were, not just the nativity scene, but in our lives throughout the year? Where is the baby Jesus? Where is Jesus? Has he disappeared? We're speaking literally and metaphorically, of course, is there room for Jesus in your life right now? Before addressing that question, we might want to look at what and who we have room for in general. The obvious answer is that we have room for our family, our spouse, our children, and even extended family. At least it should be. Many attending the Christmas Eve service are attending as families, and that's beautiful, even multiple generations of families. Christmas is many things to many different people, and the degree of religious sentiment attached to it varies considerably. Still, Christmas is often, if not always, a time when the family comes together. Many of us work very hard and play hard during the year, and consequently many families, children, and spouses don't really feel the love. Although the family is together at Christmas, it is subject to many modern stressors that can fracture family relationships. Family members, spouses, children, parents, grandparents, We'll get a Christmas present tonight or tomorrow morning, but presents that you give to people don't equal the presence of a person, and the former cannot be a substitute for the latter. Most spouses and children would prefer to have us home for dinner. If possible, this is the conflict 
working adult space. We want and need to support our families, and this requires us to spend much time away from the home. So while we have room in our life for family, sometimes the forces associated with our lifestyle make this difficult to manage much, as much as we want to, to make space for each other. In the nativity scene, we see a family be together if possible, as much as possible. We are a part of the scene we call family. Let's be there. We also have room, not just for family, but for many other things. We have room for television and gaming. We have room for online surfing on Pinterest, Facebook, and other sites. We have room for hobbies. We have room for eating out. It's wonderful that we have room for all these things, all of which can be and should be <laughs> blessings in our lives. But all of these things for which we have room need to be linked to a larger purpose and meaning. Who is that meaning? Who is that purpose? Baby Jesus is the purpose and the meaning no matter what your life has around it. Without room for Jesus, without the spiritual connection, without that longing to be in relationship with God through Jesus Christ, we are just doing fun things until we die and it's all over. Truth is, having baby Jesus in the nativity scene brings great joy. It's good news, it's tidings of great joy. Finding room for Jesus is not a negative thing. It's not a somber, dread, dreary, and dull thing. With Jesus in our scene, our lives are suddenly full of purpose. We have direction, we tag onto his values. We love what he loved. We value what he valued. We live for someone and something outside of ourselves. And that's a very good thing. Jesus came to earth, after all, for a reason. He came to find those who were lost. He came to fill the emptiness in people's lives. He came to point us to the way, the truth, and the life. He came to reveal God to us. He came that we may have life and have it abundantly. There is an emptiness to living just for ourselves. It's no surprise or accident that when people retire and find out they have more discretionary time, an overwhelming of them start to volunteer for an organization that helps other people. Today, more than 60 million Americans do volunteer activities during any given year, and many of them are seniors. We really want to have something meaningful in our lives. This is the gift that Jesus brings to us, the gift of meaning. It's not that we're secularists who don't want anything to do with Jesus. That's not us. The problem is that we've momentarily lost <laughs> Jesus. He's around here somewhere. You know that you put baby Jesus somewhere for safekeeping, someplace that you'd remember when it was time to retrieve him for an important occasion, like his birthday. But sometimes we just can't find him. We're too accustomed to living without him, and when we need him, well, we just don't know what's become of him. He's in a drawer or a closet or a long forgotten corner somewhere. We'll find him someday. We're sure of it, but right now we just don't have a clue. So life goes on. We construct our nativity scenes, our lives, and everything looks great, at least at first glance. But close inspection reveals something's off. We're all looking at different things. We really aren't worshiping the child who in a case is not in the manger. We all look preoccupied as though we're wondering what we're doing. We're still suffering from post-traumatic shopping disorder, and it feels like it's all a show. 
The Merrill's Chinese woodcarver said that many people simply lose baby Jesus. He's so easy to lose, after all. There's nothing malicious about it. People don't intend to lose Jesus, he said. In fact, they probably made a commitment to keep Jesus, but put Jesus front and center where he belongs. But he got lost. Somehow, we weren't paying attention. Perhaps he was set aside to make room for other elements of the scene, and the intention was to return him to his rightful place in our lives. But it didn't happen. However, it can. We can return Jesus to his rightful place right now as we experience the nativity and prepare to light the candles and sing Silent Night. Son of God loves pure light, radiant beams from thy holy face with the dawn of redeeming grace, Jesus Lord at thy birth. But first, let's share responsively a blessing for Christmas. Whoops. Uh, you missed some things, or I missed some things. I think I keep going for, or I can keep going. Okay, sorry about that, folks. I got so busy talking that I forgot to move the slides. God comes to us now, comes to embrace us. This child is peace beyond all peace. Follow this child who is grace beyond all grace. Live in joy and love to serve your newborn king.
And it came to pass in those days that a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be registered. The census first took place when Quirinius was governor of Syria. So all went to be registered, everyone to his own town. Now we will all sing together the first verse of Once in Royal David City. Joseph also went up from Galilee, out of the city of Nazareth, into Judea, to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be registered with Mary, his betrothed wife, who was with child. So it was that while they were there, the days were completed for her to be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn child and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. Now there were in the same country shepherds living out in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. And behold, an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were afraid. Then the angel said to them, do not be afraid. For behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For there is born to you this day in the city of David a savior who is Christ the Lord, and this will be the sign to you. You will find a babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on our peace, goodwill toward men.
So it was when the angels had gone away from them into heaven that the shepherds said to one another, let us now go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has come to pass, which the Lord has made known to us. And they came with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in a manger. Now when they had seen him, they made widely known the saying which was told them concerning this child. And all those who heard it marveled at those things which they were told them by the shepherds. But Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart. Then the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things they had seen and heard as it was told them. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king, behold, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he who was born king of the Jews? For we have seen his stars in the east and have come to worship him. When Herod the king heard this, he was troubled, and all Jerusalem with him. And when he had gathered all the chief priests and scribes of the people together, he inquired of them where the Christ was to be born. So they said to him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for this is written by the prophet, But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are not the least among the rulers of Judah, for out of you shall come a ruler who will shepherd my people Israel. 
Then Herod, when he had secretly called the wise men, determined from them what time the star had appeared. And he sent them to Bethlehem and said, go and search carefully for the young child. And when you have found him, bring him back word to me that I may come and worship him also. When they heard the king, they departed. And behold, the star which they had seen in the east went before them till it came and stood over where the young child was. When they saw the stars, they rejoiced with exceeding great joy. And when they had come into the house, they saw the young child with Mary his mother and fell down and worshiped him. And when they had opened their treasures, they presented gifts to him, gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Then being divinely warned in a dream that they should not return to Herod, they departed for their own country another way. As we sing Joy to the World, ushers will be handing out the candles. So let us sing Joy to the World. drummer boy is played and sung. If you already have your candle, you can move into the aisle. If you do not, please wait for them to get to you to give you a candle. Okay. Kathy, I think you could start coming up this side. <laughs> 